It's beginning to look a lot like Christmas. Chestnuts roasting on an open fire, literally nuts of a man that was deballed by Art the Clown in the last Terrifier movie, Terrifier 3. Long story short, it's going to be home in time for the holidays. You got a little one that runs downstairs ready to open the presents. Mama, Papa, what did you get me? Did you, did I get that new super soaker? I don't know if kids play with squirt guns anymore. Did I get that new CD from Avril Lavigne? Kids definitely listen to CDs by Avril Lavigne. Did I get Terrifier 3 on Blu-ray, Mama, Papa? You bet your ass you did. Terrifier 3 is coming home for Christmas. <laughs> I can't wait. <laughs> Twenty four, to me was the year of horror, not to be confused with horror, which it was. It's always the year for that in my house. But no, horror, thrillers were fantastic this year. Smile two, Pretty Darling, Terrifier three, The Substance. The list goes on and on until the break of dawn. Almost every movie I gave a glowing review to this year was in that category. And of course, celebrated Red One with Dwayne The Rock Johnson. No, I'm joking, that movie wasn't very good. But I did recall, and I do recall, recalling, that I said Terrifier 3 is brilliant with its release date. It's a film that's in the horror genre, so you release it around Halloween, but it's got a Christmas feel to it, so you can double dip and release the Blu-ray, the digital, the DVDs at Christmas time. Brilliant marketing. And it's one of the many reasons why this was the number one highest grossing movie of the year. And I'm not even joking. These are very small scale films with the second movie only having like a $250,000 budget. So this one has definitely upped the ante and you can tell on the screen. Acting's much better. Violence is more violent. The gore is gorier. The story is, eh, it's there. I don't really know what it is anymore, but it's fine. It's serviceable. Let me break down what you can unwrap this holiday season with your loved ones. There's going to be some video on demand offerings on Apple, Amazon Prime, other places. I can't be bothered to look up. It's going to be about $24.99 to buy, $19.99 to rent. That's how they get you with that rental price. 20 bucks to rent, 25 bucks to buy. <laughs> Forget about it. You're going to buy it. Just buy it. You know you're going to want to rewatch Art shove a uh, fucking rat thing down a person's mouth, little little tunnel for them to go into and then watch the rats fall out the innards. Th that's a storybook Christmas right there, folks. There will be a digital release and a physical copy as well. The, co the physical is coming out in December, December 17th. I got a list next to me and the physical editions are wild. We have a standard DVD at $29.99. We have a collector's edition, Blu-ray edition, short for edition. $38.99, that's getting up there. Collector's Edition 4K Ultra HD plus Blu-ray, uh, okay. $46.98, that's $50, $50. And then the Collector's, we haven't even hit the Collector's Edition 4K Ultra HD plus Blu-ray Steelbook for $49.98. Well, really only a couple dollars difference between the, the non-Steelbook and the Steelbook prices okay there's going to be a director's commentary on there there's going to be some decent bonus features but i just got to give them props this small ass studio with some very talented individuals really figured out a great marketing ploy bring out a horror film at halloween smack it in a christmas setting repackage it for the holiday it's, it's perfect. It's honestly perfect. Bonus features for the release include a making of featurette as well as the eulogy log, which is described as a creepy twist on the traditional Yule log featuring David Howard Thornton as Art the Clown. So he's reprising his role. That's beautiful. That's going to be a fun time. Collectors are going to eat it up. Th those prices are pretty crazy, but maybe not for collectors. I haven't bought a Blu-ray I think the last Blu-ray I bought was Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. Why I bought that, I have no idea. I mean, I love the Guardians movies, but why that just jumped out to me to buy? Maybe it's the colors. I'm like a four-year-old, so when I see a lot of colors and, and fancy graphics and stuff, maybe a little bit of a, a 3D effect on the cover, I'm like, ooh, ooh, piece of candy. I gotta have that. Mm, piece of candy. Oh, 
piece of candy. I, I buy that shit up. But no, I think that was one of the last ones I, I bought, unless it was one of the Harry Potter Blu-rays. Blu we, we had a situation, uh, it was ugly, where, <clears throat> and this is a side tangent, you can leave the video if you want, otherwise just stick around for the fireworks. Years ago, a great war took place in the digital space. Well, actually in the physical space, this was pre-digital. It was Blu-ray versus HD DVD. To many of you, HD DVD is, is nothing, doesn't exist, it never existed. But I can assure you, I can attest to the fact that it very much did at one point. A great war waged on for a few years. Years I will never forget. We had Warner Brothers back in one, we had Universal back in the other. It was this, this, this powerful yin-yang dynamic, a push-pull struggle. Think a coup versus Samurai Jack, smashing, clashing sword and dark energy together, and I was squarely on the HD DVD side. Why? I felt like rooting for the underdog, and I owned a stupid Xbox 360 at the time, so it had that ridiculously priced three or four hundred dollar HD DVD add-on thing you could get, but then my 360 red ringed like everyone's did because it was shit and then I lost not only the system but the, the, the player is completely rendered useless since it required the 360 for some reason because Microsoft decided in their infinite wisdom to to just throw a wrench into Sony's plans by making that HD DVD thing they didn't have any they didn't give any fucking shits about the war itself. They just wanted Sony to hurt because they didn't want them to win the Blu-ray battle. Well, they won. Spoiler, they won. And what did that mean for old Adam Bear? Well, it meant I was sitting on a mountain of HD DVDs that were basically rendered useless. A, a few of which were Harry Potter. We circled back to it. I did the weave. I weaved right back to it. I have a bunch of HD DVDs that were useless. Uh, two or three Harry Potter movies. So what did I do? Well, of course I rebought those on Blu-ray because now I'm all in on Blu-ray. I'm a turncoat. I picked them up. And then when I got to like the fourth or fifth of the nine series uh, collection, they released a master set Blu-ray box that contained all nine films. And the price of it was actually cheaper than it would have been for me to purchase the next four that I didn't have. And so I bought the box set. <laughs> and so now I own several Harry Potters on HD DVD, several on Blu-ray, and then the whole collection again on Blu-ray. Plus I'm pretty sure we purchased one or two digitally at one point or another. So I just, I have Harry Potter up the ass, okay? It's wild stuff. What was I talking? What's this video even on? Oh yeah, Terrifier 3, coming home for Christmas. Make sure to get your copy today. <laughs> Happy holidays, motherfucker. Hey, thanks for watching the video. If you liked it, make sure to subscribe to the channel. Adam does movies as I talk about films and, and uh, I, I review stuff and I do live streams and occasionally I get way off topic and you have no idea what was even happening anymore. And I can assure you I don't either because I just blacked out for about five minutes straight back there. Okay, if you love what I'm doing, think about becoming a patron. It's just an easy breezy click away. Patreon.com slash Adam does movies. You get access to a whole bunch of exclusives over there, 300 and counting every month. If you join at the one tier, you have access to all of them. If you get a little higher up, you're going to get an exclusive episode of The Cringe every single month. It's a satirical, hilarious show. If you're at like 10 bucks a month, you get The Cringe, you get an exclusive review over there. Sometimes you get a commentary with me and a buddy. And then if you go to the higher levels, you get all of that plus a vlog with my family every month. And these aren't just some rinky dinky holding up the phone, talking to it for five minutes. No, lots of camera shots, a lot of beautiful footage. And it's a good time. And it, and it all just, it all just accumulates to helping the channel grow. It's one man band. And I would appreciate it. All right, hopefully I see you next time.